Thank you very much. Uh, buenos dias. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me uh, talk about my uh, recent research or experience of uh, Zemich a plug in innovations. Um, the innovation transfer is the, uh, quite often hindered, not only technical barriers, but also cultural barriers. So infrastructure to accept the innovations is extremely, extremely important. Um, this slide shows uh, today's uh, home buildings, business operations. Home builders uh, quite often classify into three types. One is a production builder, and semi-custom builder, and custom builders. Production builders are those which uh, <coughs> utilize their model house, housing prototype, and this housing prototype is designed based on the speculation. Therefore, there is no user involvement in design decision making process. Unlike custom builders, custom builders uh, are those who uh, provide one of a kind unique uh, products which accommodate diverse needs and demands of their users. The, uh, the, the middle one is same custom builders, is uh, between the two. They still utilize their model homes, but modify the model homes through their dialogue. So dialogue, it's not necessarily efficient. Back and forth and back and forth in communications required to achieve their final level of uh, products, which uh, respond to clients' needs and demands. So have a look at the uh, standardization uh, right, right here. Standardization is the key to mass productions, key to enhance the efficiency in the production and the communications. So standardization is very important and helps reduce the initial costs. Yeah? So having a look at the uh, ready built homes, mass produced homes, standardization level is the obviously high. So that means the, uh, you can deliver mass produced cheaper, lower cost housing, unlike uh, custom homes which re reach the lowest in terms of the standardization level. But speaking of the customizability, design customiza customizations, obviously custom design is the highest, unlike ready-built homes the lowest. In other words, we are having production gap between the two. The needs for uh, standardization of housing components helped reduce their production cost while enhancing efficiency in the production and communications for their affordability and the need for design customizability that accommodates diverse needs and demands. Yeah. Today's consumers looking to uh, purchase or live in quality affordable housing. It's not quality house which sacrifice affordability, not affordable housing, which sacrifices the quality. Quality affordable housing in which quality is defined by the users within their economic constraints, therefore affordable. So in order to bridge the gap, uh, the relatively provocative new notion of mass customization was reviewed. Mass customization is an uh, oxymoron, a contradictory words. How can we combine the different notion, standardizations and customization? Mass production and customization, how can we combine them? This oxymoron, this uh, notion was introduced relatively far from new, 1987. Yeah. Exactly the same year that uh, United Nations talked about the sustainable development so sustainability and mass customization has a, a kind of synergy that between the two. And they are generally speaking, what is the mass customization? Mass customization is all about combinations, combination of standardized components. Combination helps customize the end product. Okay? Joseph Pine second say mass production of individually customized goods and services, not only product, but also services as well. 
based on this uh, particular uh, generic uh, notion of mass customizations, mass custom design system model was uh, proposed for the delivery of quality affordable housing okay, for people in the society. A mass custom design model comprises of two uh, aspects. One is a tangible aspect, product. And the other one is an intangible process, communication aspects. Communication is a very, very important aspect. Uh, service systems in, 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 uh, comprises of uh, design communication, design consulting place, not only physical place, but also um, digital world nowadays, and design communication tools and uh, personal because of the uh, user may hardly understand the building regulations and the possibility of using natural resources. So still uh, expertise uh, required, therefore, the builder should provide some uh, idea, facilitates user choices, okay? right choices at the right times. Right time, it's not only today, but also in the future, tomorrow. Product subsystems encompasses is the volumetric components, exterior interior components, and optional um, equipment such as amenities, renewable energy technologies, and, and so on. Okay. Um, you know Toyota. Uh, Toyota produce cars, uh, automotives. But in Japan, Toyota produce not only automotive, but also ha homes as well. Uh, they produce prefabricated modular homes. Okay. So Toyota uh, utilize three structural units like this, and they offer half size of each and space up components, such as bay windows. So users they can pick the structural element, standardized structural elements from catalog and put, to, put together like a Lego blocks to build the house okay, according to their needs and demands. Balcony could be um, volumetric components, but this case is just style. Wall, exterior wall, okay, different colors and different textures and different functions. Some of them, equipped with their photocatalytic reactions, like pro, uh, their functions, self-cleaning functions, so you, you don't need to clean it, some of them. Yeah. Um, kitchen, uh, Seki Sui uh, Heim, another big companies, they offer 20 different styles and 15 different colors and 20 uh, multiplied by 15. 300 variations can be achieved through mass customization process, even staircase. In the context of mass customizations, users are the final design decision makers. They will select their key housing components from catalog and combine them to customize their end products. That's the beauty of their mass customizations. Therefore, communication is very important between two parties, the users and the builders. Okay? So, the mass custom design communication tool, it's not necessarily paper catalog, but also um, physical model or something like this. And uh, Dr. Azuma, uh, he studied um, PhD and master's um, University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And uh, during his study, he developed uh, this physical uh, model like this. But this physical model can be expandable horizontally and vertically, according to the size of uh, users. Okay? And uh, in addition to uh, expandable model, uh, he uh, developed the uh, uh, wall and the floor uh, panels, and uh, therefore users can pick their particular panels, colors and textures, and uh, personalize their space. And these miniature furniture is uh, very useful because of their, when you um, determine the size of the house without furniture, you may um, determine, you know, you, you may uh, fix the size. So these miniature furniture help to uh, make the efficient uh, space. Okay. Um, this is the uh, case uh, Japanese uh, manufacturers, uh, producers, they offer internal, external uh, finishing materials and leg seal. They also utilize the miniature model for mass customizations for bathroom pots. Okay. 
not only bathroom ports, but uh, other things as well. And this is the uh, Canadian context. A mass customization was applied to uh, low energy mass custom homes and digitalized mass custom communications. I believe or not, this is me. I was also involved in this particular uh, project. Uh, the budget was limited. Therefore, number of choices were also limited. Uh, four choices given. One is the uh, uh, ramp, uh, the handicap and wheelchair access. And another one is the solar, solar access, something like that. And the other option is the entrance, okay, ordinary entrance, and also a solar option. So when you click it, the wall, okay, some wall option appear, a brick, stone, sidings. And when you click the brick, okay, the further option appears. Okay, and the stone okay, it has uh, different options. Is the random ashlers? or it could be a coast ashlers and the sidings, weather boards, it's the different colors or um, um, you know, textures and according to user choices. When you click the face here, another materials appear, uh, option one, two, three, probably four, it's a little bit dark colors, and even rooftops, and there is the number of uh, panels option appear. This case is the uh, solar panels. Um, option one, two, three, if you click the three, the color of the roofs changes. Okay. Well, this is the um, mass custom design, digitalized communication tools we uh, developed. And this is what uh, uh, our clients, this case is Concordia University uh, based in Canada, uh, choose from and actually built it according to, uh, accordingly. And this case, a rooftop is covered with eight kilowatt the monocrystalline the PV. And try to reduce the energy consumption as much as possible. So this one is a low energy mass custom homes and provide the benchmark, provide a stepping stone towards zero energy mass custom homes. Okay. Or in other words, Zemich. As I mentioned previously, we are having a production gap between the two. Standardization, the higher the standardization level, which helps reduce the costs. Lower the customization level, the higher the customization level, which accommodate diverse needs and demands, and lower the standardization level. So that means they're expensive. Okay. In order to bridge the gap, uh, mass custom homes were conceptualized and proposed. All the housing components are standardized, okay. not the house itself. If house is standardized, is ready built house, components are standardized, but the combination of the standardized components help customize the end products. Yeah. This is the traditional conventional way of um, low cost housing development or mass produced house, same house again and again and again. Yeah. So this yields economies of scale. Uh, so enhanced efficiency in production communication, which is good for affordability. But the quality is not as good as mass custom homes. Okay. The, the price between the two, this is the mass custom homes, and this is the mass produced house. Okay. Between the two, selling price is the same. Okay. Having a look at the uh, components, uh, for example, here, the round windows and round windows and Victorian shape dormers is the same and the same colors, all about user choices. Even through the filter of mass customizations, attached house, detached house, doesn't matter, is the mass housing communities can also grow naturally or individually according to wants and needs of individual as well as society. Okay? And within their economy, and therefore affordable. Mass customization can be applied not only horizontal uh, extension, but also vertical okay? apartment buildings or mid-rise and high-rising buildings. And this is traditional way. The building starts from the lower portion, okay? ground, and then second floor is built, and third floor is built, and fourth, and did, 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 did. Start, always start from the lower portion. Why? Why do we start from the top? Top to bottom, because of the gravity. Be, the, unfortunately, because of the gravity, 
the, when the building received the uh, horizontal force, okay, earthquake, okay, the building sway, one stroke, second stroke, and third stroke, and demolished. Okay. It's the uh, building sway. And the people live in the house, also sway, furniture sway, and, and receive some damages. Okay. The question arises, why don't we separate the living box, living space, okay, and the structure? Structure and living space, structure support, living box infill. Why don't we separate between the two? Based on the notion of the uh, Professor John Habraken, uh, he was a former director of uh, MIT's, MIT School of Architecture, and he envisaged open building concept, and Japan implemented open building concept and built something like this. This one is the next 21. Okay. Um, um, left hand side is kind of traditional way of buildings. These uh, living uh, units are built from bottom to top. Okay. But far end, far right end, this one is a very clear separation between structure and uh, a living box. Okay. Um, therefore, this living box can be plugged in from top to bottom, not necessarily bottom to top, okay? but this structure needs to equip with their infrastructure that uh, support our daily life activities. We need the waters, we need the power, electricity, and, uh, um, and each floor may be able to equip their green space. Today's subdivision development, you know, when you um, build a rural area or sub a suburban area, the land is a flat, and then you have a plot one, plot two, subdivided. Okay? So usually subdivision development is a horizontal. Why don't we bring this subdivision development, attach each other, extend vertically? So that is the relatively new idea, concept of vertical subdivision development. Therefore, even you live in the third floor, or fourth floor, you can have the trees, you can have a grass, or maybe vegetation, the exactly same features that you experience on the ground floor. Okay? Vertical subdivision development is relatively new ideas in a way to accommodate living box. So living box, it's not necessarily prefabricated home, something like that. It could be a you know, site built or ordinary masonry, doesn't matter. But if prefabricated, used as a modular prefabricated something, something like that, okay? In this case, is the, you can plug in and plug off, okay? And the people move one place to another, why don't we bring our house from one place to another, just like a automotive in industry? The car is occupied by people, is their families, but the land is occupied by somebody else, okay? So you, what you need to do is just you know, find a car park and a plug-in and not necessarily plug off. The differences between car park and housing park is the, um, the floor needs to equip with the uh, uh, infrastructures. Therefore, you have uh, waters, electricity, and a green space, and, and so on. If you have a green space, vertical forest helps reduce the uh, CO2 and, and uh, you know, evaporation, cooling the space, and uh, relaxing people, so it's a uh, lot of benefits. Um, because of the uh, clear separation between the two, when the buildings received the earthquake, building sway, but living box, okay? living box, it's not necessarily sway as much as the uh, support, because there is a physical uh, separation between the two. So if we have uh, enough capacity, we can provide uh, isolation, systemic systems, but uh, just like uh, you know, uh, the um, mechanical separations can uh, minimize or, or re eliminate the waves as much as possible. There's a beauty of the um, plug-in systems for provision of systemic um, things. And uh, each unit uh, can be designed and constructed according to user choices. And the mass customizations apply not only horizontal, vertical, mixed use, 
mixed mix income communities. But uh, you can have the agate. So is a safety can be retained. <clears throat> this is the case of South Korea. And um, applied to university, students' house, students' village, a container is used for living box and a plug in and plug off according to the uh, number of enrollment. When the enrollment number is low, they plug off and provide open space. When the enrollment is high, plug in to accommodate a number of uh, students. Um, the living box, let me go to finish quite soon. Uh, living box uh, should be designed to accommodate diverse needs and demands. We can learn so many things from grow home and uh, adaptable homes idea conceptualized by Dr. Professor Avi Friedman at McGill University School of Architecture. And, and this concept is the, uh, you know, people's uh, family changes. Okay? Their needs and demands are changes. Probably young couples and occupy one house, open floor plannings would be appropriate. But when having a child, vision privacy, acoustic privacy may require. So the house itself should be designed to provide the resilience, okay? in not only internally, but also externally as well. Chile has a brilliant idea of locals housing development um, architect and Aravina, and he um, you know, demonstrated locals housing. And um, we can ha learn so many, so many brilliant ideas from brilliant people from across the world. So Zemich, plug-in systems and integrations of the, uh, these brilliant ideas towards the delivery of a future-proof cities in which mobility cannot be ignored. Okay. This is my last slide. Zemich is the abbreviation of zero energy mass custom homes. Zemich, plug-in housing systems, is all about humanity and all about the sustainability. In order to accommodate wants and needs of individuals as well as society. I think this is the uh, message I'd like to convey today. Thank you very much for your attention. Gracias. <laughs>